Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Uplong Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus. And I ha have here with me Sister Joanna. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And we both wish everyone a blessed Sabbath day. And uh, we pray that this message will be a, a blessing to, to you all. And now, Sister Joanna will begin our presentation the song to just uh, bless our hearts and prepare our hearts for the message to follow. But before we go to her, let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. God is, is the weather is perfect here in uh, <clears throat> Fairfield where I am. And I pray that uh, Lord, the weather is, is well for you, wherever you are. And, <clears throat> and I, I want to just thank you, Lord, for, uh, for this and everything that you've given us. And I want to pray that you will just bless this message. Just uh, take me out of the way, Lord, and, and uh, just put the words in my mouth that you desire in a way that you know will bless those who are here. And we just thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that you're doing in our lives. And we just pray that you continue that wonderful work in us. And, <clears throat> and we give you all the honor, all the <clears throat> glory. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. And happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, Lord, help me, guide me through this song and open our hearts to receive the message of this song. <clears throat> there is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen. Your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength found in your grace. Your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. Make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. I believe in you, God, I believe in you. Release your love inside of me. Unleash your power for all to see. Spirit, come and fall on us. Over and over, oh Lord, make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for, shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life. And do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable. All things are possible in you. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable. All things are possible in you. 
what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for. What you are famous for, I believe in you. God, I believe in you. There is no fear, as I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress. Over and over. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Sister Joanna. What a lovely song that is. And now for our good news message today, entitled From Spiritual Gifts to Love. And we'll begin with the introduction. Today's Sabbath message reflects upon various attributes with which God arms his people for their works of service in the world. He first instills in those who accept Christ as their savior certain gifts of the spirit to serve each other. In addition, he arms us with faith, hope, and love, and even prepares us to receive them from the very depths of his own heart. And we'll begin with uh, a previous a passage from our previous message. And that is 1 Corinthians 12, and we'll read verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> and the scripture reads, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, who were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is a curse. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries, and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. But to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith of the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And to another, the effect of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, this distinguishing of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretations of tongues. The one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. Amen. And so now we see that when God gives his children, who is his, by virtue of Christ and accepting Christ as their Savior, he blesses us with gifts through the Spirit that he places in us. And uh, we've seen a variety of those. We've, named, we've listed some. And now I want to read you some comments regarding what we've read. God gives us spiritual gifts to benefit the common good among us. Since each person is given different gifts, it brings many blessings to the group. This is likened to a military squad when different skills are used to benefit the group as a whole. Each soldier offers a particular skill to the group. He is or she is relied upon to give his or her special service for the benefit all. And so now we'll read about the use of spiritual gifts. 
Okay, First Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 31. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? Now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? Now there are many members in one body. Amen. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Uh, again, the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Now, notice that. Uh, Lord has designed us so that, in reference to a, a body part or, or a spiritual gift, if one person, which is, and we're one body in Christ together as a group, and God places us in a group uh, so as that if, if one member possesses a gift that we deem less honorable or, or not as good as another, we, we honor them more that they may become more presentable because the one who already has this, he doesn't need that extra honor. And so God designs us so that we are, we are self-sufficient in maintaining the body as one. And therefore, that his work in us is, is blessed. And continuing in verse 24, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked. So that there may be no division in the body, that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You are Christ's body and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? Do not have gifts of healings. All do not have gifts of healings, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But honestly desire the greater gifts, and I show you a still more excellent way. So let's keep that last statement in mind because that's going to come just a little later. Okay. God designed the body of Christ so that by its very nature, it will facilitate unity. The word encourages us to bestow abundant honor on those who are deemed less honorable. The less presentable become more presentable because the more 
presentable have no need for encouragement. When one is honored, everyone rejoices for it. We rejoice for the body of Christ. Amen. And you see, God has put us in the body of Christ together. And we all are not the same because he gives us all different gifts. And we all have different roles. But we are to bless each other for our particular role and therefore hold up each other, edify one another. And that is the reasons for those gifts that were designed to edify the body and, and bring about unity in the body as well. And so <clears throat> we'll go to 1 Corinthians 13 and we'll read verses one through 13. And this is that 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 excellent way or that better way that was mentioned in the last verse of the last passage we read. And it says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. For I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have the all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag, and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, does not provoke, does not take into account a wrong suffer, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, it will be done away with. If there are tongues, it will cease. If there is knowledge, will be done away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. And when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. But now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I will know fully, just as also I have been fully known. But now faith, hope, love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen. And so now we're going to learn some more about love even how God bestows that love in us. Okay, so nothing, we'll start with nothing profits without love. As noted above, God, through his spirit, blesses us with spiritual gifts that bring unity to the body. He also gives means to edify and bear one another's burdens and members of the same body. However, despite the value of spiritual gifts in the body, they amount to nothing against the surpassing greatness of love in the hearts of those who manifest them. <clears throat> nothing profits without love. As also noted in the passage above, prophecy, speaking in tongues, knowledge of mysteries, or gifts to the poor, amount to nothing in the absence of love. First John uh, 4, Verse seven reads, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Amen. If, okay, and now we'll go to manifestation of love. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into his grace in which we stand. And we exalt in hope of the glory of God. Not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. And proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. Amen. And that's how God instills his love in us. He, he picks us to things and he prepares our heart and we may receive that love. He brings us there. He, he just brings us to his love when we take, when we accept Christ and we add his spirit in us and he takes us, he knows our heart, he knows what needs to be done, and he knows where we need to go. Go that is to him who has love. And 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 he knows that that if if we seek him, he will reward us with himself. And he is love. He rewards those who diligently seek him. And he takes us through the process and he brings and he gives himself. He gives us his love. Amen. So let's go to prophecy, a superior gift. 1 Corinthians 14, we'll read verses 1 through 19. And it reads, Pursue love that desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophecy. The one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification, and exhortation, and consolation. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. One who prophesies edifies the church. Now I wish that you all spoke in tongues. Excuse me. But even more that you would prophesy. And greater is one who prophesies than one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets, so that the church may receive, receive edified. And now, brethren, if I come to you speaking in tongues, what will I profit you unless I speak to you either by way of revelation, of knowledge, of prophecy, of of teaching, that even lifeless things, either flute or harp, in producing a sound, if they do not produce a distinction in the tones, how will it be known what is played on the flute, on the harp? If the bugle produces an indistinct sound, who will prepare himself for battle? So also you, unless you utter by the tongue speech that is clear, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are perhaps a great many kinds of languages in the world. No kind is without meaning. If then I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be to the one who speaks a barbarian, and the one who speaks will be a barbarian to me. So also, since you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek to abound for the edification of the church. Therefore, let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Okay, uh, and moving on. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What is the outcome then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the mind also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. Otherwise, if you bless in the spirit only, how will the one who fills the place of the ungifted say the amen? 
at your giving of thanks, since he does not know what you are saying. For you are giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not edified. I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. However, in the church, I desire to speak five words with my mind so that I may instruct others also other than 10,000 words in a tongue. Amen. And so some comments on what we've read, uh, spiritual gifts in the church. Prophecy is a desirable gift in the church. It happens to be the spiritual gift the Apostle Paul, the writer of this epistle, prefers above others. The way of setting the stage to decide for a gift, to pray that God might instill in you, consider the thoughts of that we have covered. Spiritual gifts are given for the edification and unification of the church. Seek to abound in these benefits. Yes. Amen. And so if we seek to edify the church with our gift, and then we'll use that gift properly. And so now instructions for the church. Okay, and so uh, here, 1 Corinthians 14, we'll read verses 20 through 33. And it reads, Brethren, do not be children in your thinking, and in evil be infants, but in your thinking be mature. In the law it is written, by men of strange tongues and by the lips of strangers, I will speak to this people. And even so, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. So then, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. The prophecy is for a sign, not to unbelievers, but to those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church assembles together, and all speak in tongues, and ungifted men or unbelievers enter, will they not say that? are mad? If all prophecy and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by all. He is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God. Declaring that God is certainly among you. What is the outcome then, brother? When you assembly, when you assemble, each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation, that all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or <clears throat> at the most three, and each in turn, and one must interpret. But if there is no interpreter, he must keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, let the others pass judgment. If a revelation is made to another who is seated, the first one must keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn all may be exhorted. And the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Amen. Amen. Tongues and prophecy. Among the spiritual gifts in the church, tongues are the most misunderstood. According to the word above, Tongues are for a sign for unbelievers, while prophecy is a sign for believers. However, if the whole assembly prophesies and unbelievers hear, they are convicted and called to account. If all speak in tongues, the ungifted might say they're all crazy. Okay, and 
Therefore, desire to prophecy. Okay, and uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verses 37 through 40. If anyone thinks he is a prophet, spiritual, let him recognize that the things which I write to you are the Lord's commandment. But if anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. Therefore, my brethren, desire earnestly to prophecy. Do not forbid to speak in tongues. But all things must be done properly and in an orderly manner. Amen. Amen. And now we'll go to the gospel defined. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11. And the scripture reads, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you. Lest you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. And that gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And that he appeared to Cephas and to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now. Some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I have persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them. And not I, but the grace of God with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Amen. And so we, we know Paul's contribution. And despite the fact that he, he began by persecuting the church, and we know once he was called, once he met with Jesus on the way with, to Damascus, and he was baptized, he hasn't stopped working. And, and he has made contribution to more than all the other apostles and those who were with Jesus. And we know that Jesus revealed all these things to Paul himself after he was baptized and, and Paul was taught by Jesus through the spirit. And that's all we because of him. Okay, and now the foundation we stand upon, which is what we've read, all reveals to us the gospel which he preached. It is the message upon which we also stand. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and raised on the third day. These events occurred according to the scripture. It was in the scriptures. He appeared to Peter and to the 12. He also appeared to over 500 brethren in one time. Last of all, Paul himself he felt undeserving because he had persecuted the church. So that is the foundation upon which we stand message of the gospel which brings us, brings us all to Christ and God and subsequently to his love. That brings us to the conclusion. Okay, so 
1 Corinthians 15, we'll read verse 20 through 26. For now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. But since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive, each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, after that, those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. He hands over the kingdom to God and the Father. He has abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies on his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message today. And we thank you for, for all the blessings. We thank you for the gifts that you give us. We thank you that you bring us through love, through the trials you take us through and prepare in our hearts. And you instill that love in us. This one we're ready the perfect time and for these things lord we thank you dearly we just pray that you'll continue your work in us and you'll bring us home at the proper time at, at the day when it's time and help us lord just help us help us to continue to do your work while we're on this earth and that we that others may be blessed because of you and because of what you've done for us just help us, Lord, and be with us this day and in the days going forward. We give you all the honor, all the praises, and all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.